For well over 10 years now, Evernote has been the central tool in my personal productivity system, keeping all of my digital stuff where I need it, when I need it. And a big part of that equation is how Evernote works in mobile, and they've improved it a lot with the latest version. I thought today I'd share with you what I consider to be some of the best features and improvements that Evernote has put in place in mobile. That's today on Dottotech. <laughs> Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And today we're going to be diving into Evernote in mobile. Now, one note is I'm going to be showing you this today on my iPhone. I use an iPhone, so you'll be seeing Evernote in mobile on the iPhone. And the Android users out there, your Evernote should be pretty much identical. Some of the screens might look slightly different. The odd feature might or might not be available, but Evernote is striving to make the Android and the iOS version as identical as possible, so there's still lots of value in you watching today's video. So let's dive right into it and actually I'll start out by not going on the phone right away but instead starting out on Evernote's new home page the desktop version and here you see my version of Evernote my installation of Evernote and you see my home page now the home page is a place that Evernote has uh, set up for us to give us a central location a dashboard which has all of our different Evernote related stuff all in one place. And increasingly, I'm appreciating using the home page more. The reason I'm going to start with this is the home page is slightly, we use it slightly differently in mobile, but this is what my home page looks like on my desktop. I've got tasks, I've got integration with my calendar, I've got the scratch pad, which I will be talking about much more as we look at the, at the mobile version. And then I've got different pin notes and filtered notes and the different organization for my notes and tags, which is the way that I use Evernote. The main navigation tool that I use in Evernote is I use shortcuts with all of the different either files or notebooks that I work on a lot in individual notes or notebooks of my most current projects. And I will navigate often visually to say, if I'm going to be preparing a new webinar, I go into my webinar Wednesday folder and there are all of my notes for my webinars. So I use shortcuts a lot. That's a big part of my system. And again, I'll show you how that reflects when we go into mobile. And let's start by going into mobile. Let's start with that homepage. That's going to be the place that we are going to begin. Opening Evernote on our mobile phone will bring us to a homepage, which is very similar to the homepage that we see in the desktop. But of course, the formatting is different. It has to be formatted for mobile. So you see the different widgets. Now, each of these little uh, blocks of data are called a widget, and you can determine which ones you have access to in each version, desktop or mobile. And as you scroll through, you'll see I have my notes, I have my scratch pad, I have my task list, etc. All of that is available to me here. And even the same cover image is available to me as well. Now, if I want to change the orientation or change the layout of my homepage in mobile, which I do want to do because I use it differently than in the desktop, I just tap on that little home icon on the very top and up comes my ability to modify the home page. And each of the uh, each of the modules, as I said, is called a widget. And you can uh, you can see I have other ones available that I haven't turned on here in the very bottom. But at the top, you can see the ones that I'm using. Now, the one that I use the most, and I'll be talking about it in just a moment, is the scratch pad. So I'd really like to move that to the very top of the list because it's the one that I use the most. Now, it takes a little bit of practice. The the navigate or the uh, invoking uh, the uh, moving the different uh, widgets around. You have to kind of tap almost twice on the the little um the little four bars there, and then you'll get a bounding box around the note and you'll be able to move it. And <laughs> I selected the wrong one. So let me select the right one there. There it is, a scratch pad. And I'm gonna move that to the very top. So now when I say done, you'll see that my homepage has been modified to allow the scratch pad to be at the very top. And this is really where I'm gonna begin. The homepage is nice, but the most useful feature, the most kind of useful evolution of my use of Evernote has been using the scratch pad. The scratch, and I, I kind of almost feel like the scratch pad might have been an afterthought by Evernote. They just kind of threw it in, but oh my gosh, it's turned out to be such a useful tool. Because here typically is how I would collect information on Evernote when I'm on the road. I considered Evernote to be an information vacuum cleaner, sucking up information wherever I am. So I use the camera constantly to capture information. I save little notes and little ideas to myself in Evernote. And in the past, when I saved little notes to myself, I would save them as a full-on Evernote note, which means they got buried inside of Evernote. Now, I would, ma I would manage it and I would find those notes, but it wasn't an ideal setup. Using the scratch pad, this is just a quick entry place. I can, any idea, any note, any quick thought that I have, I can put down in the scratch pad, and then I can deal with it when I get back to my computer and my desktop. 
The other huge factor in making Evernote so viable on the on mobile is not a Evernote feature per se, but is an operating system that feature from our either Android or Apple iPhones. And that is the growth of dictation and how dictation has become so ubiquitous and so predictable. So whenever I want to make a note, I don't use the keyboard. I don't like using the keyboard on my smartphone, but instead I use the dictation. Now in Android phones, the dictation, the, the microphone icon will be up higher in the keyboard and the Apple phones, it's down here in the very bottom. But when I tap on that, you'll see how accurate the dictation is. So I can just start taking notes at any time and the dictation capabilities of the phone will copy down what I'm saying exactly, exclamation mark. New paragraph. So I'm able to make any notes I need, capture them quickly, and have them to deal with in the future, period. I will hit the keyboard there to stop that. So that now has captured that note for me. I, as I say, I don't type anymore. I use dictation all of the time. But this ability with the scratch pad to be able to quickly capture exactly what it is that I want to capture at any one moment on the fly without having to open a note, without having to navigate and make decisions where I'm going to store it and how I'm going to name it and how I'm going to find it again. This has changed my instant note taking capabilities. And of course, being a cloud-based service with, uh, with full sync uh, attached, uh, with, with full sync, one of the features that Evernote has, if I navigate back towards Evernote on my desktop and I go back to the home page, you know, I will see here that yep, it's already synced. It's in, and this is in real time. I haven't edited for time this part of the video. You can see that that, that note is in place. Now, if I want to take this note and I want to use it in a more permanent basis, you clicking on the three dot menu on the side here, I can convert this from a scratch pad from just a quick note into an official note within, within Evernote. So I can save it. I can save it in a notebook. I can name it. It can be the start of a document. So this ability to be able to capture notes quickly, instantly has changed how I use Evernote in mobile might work for you as well. I'm just gonna interrupt this video just for a moment to let you know that we have an Evernote quick start guide. Over the years, we've taught thousands of people to use Evernote and I've developed this quick start program, the fastest way to get started with Evernote. And even if you use Evernote, the quick start guide is terrific because it gives you a fresh perspective on using Evernote. It only takes about a half an hour to go through. It's completely free. The link is right here for you to sign up or it will be in the description as well. The Evernote Quick Start Guide. Give it a shot. I think you'll like it. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. The next way that I'm increasingly using Evernote in mobile is visual navigation. Evernote has always been very powerful as far as search goes. You hit the uh, you hit the magnifying glass and you can search for any note with based on the text that's in the, that note. Evernote has very powerful search, but I don't necessarily like searching by text in the smartphone. Just again because I don't like using the keyboard very much. But I do visually navigate a lot in Evernote using the shortcuts, as I mentioned off the top of today's video. Well, now they've made the shortcuts almost identical inside of the mobile version. If we tap on the hamburger menu, up comes our navi main navigation within Evernote. And if I touch on the shortcuts, icon, then all of the exact same shortcuts that I have here. Now these shortcuts are user definable. You click and you drag a notebook or you drag a note into the shortcuts and create an order for them. So the documents and the projects that you're working on are that, that are top of mind, you can place at the top of the list. So you can see my most current projects all here at the very top of the list. And you see them also reflected here inside of Evernote in mobile in the same way. So I usually, if I need to access any of my notes in Evernote, it's usually something that I'm currently working on and I will visually navigate using the shortcuts instead of doing search. The next benefit of using Evernote in mobile is a little bit subtle. So I've got to give you a little bit of backstory as to why this is important. When I sign contracts, they're typically PDF, con PDF documents and probably the same for you. And lots of important documents are PDFs that we get that we get sent to us. And we store those on our computer where it's pretty easy for us to find them when we need to resource them for whatever reason. But if we're traveling or if we're out and about and we need to resource those same documents on our smartphone, it can be problematic. You might have to log into a shared file service or an online storage platform and hope that you've synced those documents to that particular location and then find them from your phone. It can be it can be a little bit of a crapshoot as to whether or not you find the document you're looking for, or you can waste a lot of time trying to find said document. However, 
Within Evernote, I take every PDF document that I get and I save it into an Evernote note because Evernote will search on the contents of that PDF. So it's a terrific filing system for PDFs, especially for things like contracts. And because it's now in Evernote, if I need to find that when I'm traveling around, I just basically can go in, do a quick search for whatever PDF document I need to find. I can do a quick search for it. Evernote will surface the document. And when I open it up, what you'll see is you won't see the PDF document or you won't see the text of it. It's all, it's an attachment. I have to open the PDF here in order to see that document, but I can quickly access them this way. Using Evernote as a filing system to, as a, each Evernote note being a container for a different PDF document is a brilliant way of storing and making sure you can access these important documents when you need them and where you need them. This way of using Evernote, it's a bit of a game changer. The last of the features that I'm gonna share with you in this video today, as far as my personal use of Evernote, is I use the camera all of the time. If we open in, you can access the camera in a couple of different ways. If you create a new note inside of Evernote, you can always access the camera and put an image right inside of the note by tapping on the camera icon that's in the toolbar. And if you don't do that, you can also access the camera directly from the from the new the new document menu at the very bottom of Evernote. But the beauty of the Evernote camera, especially when you have it set in auto mode, is it will automatically frame and capture text, much like uh, Scannable, the Evernote utility that we use often as a scanning application but it will capture this text. It will capture anything that we're, any, any written information that we're trying to capture. It can be a handwritten note. It can be a whiteboard that you're, that you're brainstorming a project on or a blackboard, or it can be a document that you just wanna capture as I did this one here very quickly. And then Evernote will parse out the text. It will make the text searchable so that you can then later on find exactly what's within that particular document. So as an information vacuum cleaner, just sucking in information from all around you, the Evernote camera is almost indispensable. And I, it's the first place I go when I need to capture something and remember it. Often just, you know, slides at a presentation, you wanna capture the information on a slide, whiteboards, as I say, lots of different ways that the Evernote camera makes total sense and works. And it should become the default that you think about when you wanna capture a piece of information. Can I take a picture of that instead of writing it down or making a note? That's the best way to capture the information. So the Evernote camera in mobile is the other main feature that I use all of the time within Evernote. And I think you should consider and you should kind of, you should get up to speed with using because it will save you time. You will thank me, I'm sure. Now there are uh, several other great features that are built into the Evernote, uh, that are built into Evernote that I didn't bring up here as I talked about mobile that other people might find really valuable. Uh, Evernote, the ability to use Evernote as a task manager now. Evernote has significantly upgraded the quality of the task management application. Uh, they, if we go and create a new document, you can also create sketch documents, which are little illustrations. I'm not sure how useful it is on a smartphone. I find it a little bit finicky on a smartphone, but certainly on a tablet, it becomes very viable. Uh, and a lot of people also like to do audio attachments where they, where they make audio notes to themselves in Evernote. Again, these are things that I don't personally use, but I bet you do, and many of you do at least. And I would love if you would take the time and share with me the best ways, the best uses you find for Evernote in mobile. Make sure you take a moment and share that in YouTube comments, and I'll be sure to take a look and I'll learn something and you might help me out with my next Evernote video. And finally, if you found today's video to be useful, if you found it enjoyable and entertaining, please a like and a share and perhaps a subscribe is always appreciated. Now, before we leave one last thought, Every week here at Dottotech, we host a free tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we share with you some aspect of productivity or content creation. We often talk about Evernote on Webinar Wednesday. You're invited, it's free. Every single Wednesday, we put one on. I would love to see you there. The links are right here. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.